EA Sports. It's in the game. EA Sports and the PGA Tour proudly present the season-long race for the FedEx Cup. Today, it's live opening round coverage of the Pittsburgh Invitational. Hello again and welcome. Rich Lerner alongside my friend and colleague, Frank Navala. We are back in the state of Pennsylvania getting set to kick off the round here at one of the great golf courses in the world, Oakmont Country Club. Frank, you're very familiar with it because you were right in the mix down the stretch at the 1994 U.S. Open right here at Oakmont. And Rich, it's so good just to be back here. You know, there's so much history uh, in Oakmont. It's been a host to so many prestigious tournaments and our sports, such as the U.S. Amateur, the U.S. Open, the Women's U.S. Open, and the PGA Championship. It's just one of the true gems on the golf landscape. He's loading up on it. Look at the coil there. That is burning through the atmosphere. Look at that thing, it's got a tail on it. Yeah, that's like a rocket ship. That one was launched by NASA. Ooh, that is long. That is a fantastic long shot. There's no way he could hit that without a tail breeze. Surely that breeze had to help then. This is a good looking shot. That one inside of 10 feet really dialed in. Not a gimme, but well within his range. Frankie took plenty of time on this birdie putt. He looked at it from three different angles he forgot one very important ingredient. Yeah, pace. You can definitely fall in love with the line, even with approach shots as well, but obviously we see it more on putting. Action resuming early on the back nine. Let's go to hole number 11. Certainly a lot of golf left to play in this championship, but what does our featured golfer need to do to turn it around? It's back to the basics, Rich. Find fairways, find greens, give yourself opportunities. There's plenty of birdies out there, but you've got to give yourself chances. Settling in now after that tough start. Appears to be a smart shot, Frank. Yeah, no problem here. That's going to fly all the way. Pretty good shot right there, about 10 feet away, setting up the putt for birdie. This one just requires a little bit of focus. Just slides by. Yeah, can't afford to miss too many of those out here today. He has this for par.
Good par, good position on the leaderboard. We are at the par 512 here at Oakmont. And this is a big par 5 at 667 yards. That's as bad as shot us off scene for a long while. And that one rolls just into the rough. Now you have to decide whether or not that ball's going to fly or not. He'll need to be strong with this. Great shot out of the rough. He avoided all the troubles just to get that on the green. That was not an easy shot. He'll settle. Shouldn't be a problem here. Things pointed to a good week. Birdie there, very important right now. Playing some good golf. Pushing our way into this back nine, we arrive at the par three 13th. It's 183 yards. This is looking really good. Beautiful shot. That is tight. Unbelievable. That is one to save it for the rest of the round. Well, he's going for back to back birdies here, trying to jumpstart this round. Some momentum moving in the right direction. You get the sense now with that birdie that our young star so explosive is setting himself up for a big weekend run. 14, pretty short par four at 358 yards. Frank? Get the ball in play here and certainly your best opportunity for birdie on the second nine so far. Tasty looking right there from just a perfect spot in the fairway. That is prime real estate. How do you get a line like that? Seriously, you could hit any club from there. Frank, what kind of approach shot is this at 14? Well, you have a couple of different areas you can aim at. When the flag's on the, on the right, that right corner, it's definitely easy enough to stop it there. Even the back corner, you can go more directly at this flag or uh, just use the mounding in the middle of the green let the ball run towards that flag in your favor. Uh, this green is a little more conducive to uh, good approach play. Oh, it looked like he caught a flyer right there, Frank. Well, I don't know what he caught, but this is way too much. So the second of the par four goes begging, and now we will have to rely on the short game. Yeah, but a short game, as we all know, can uh, redeem a lot of mistakes. Let's see if he does it here. Okay, good shot on the dance floor. You don't want to let this one get away. This is about concentration and focus at this point. <laughs> Dropping a shot here late in the round, Frank, with that bogey at the 14th. Shouldn't be a problem here, but not a formality either. Yeah. 
So with that, the score is now at even par. Don't forget, second round coverage coming your way tomorrow here on EA Sports for our entire crew. I'm Rich Lerner saying so long for now. EA Sports and the PGA Tour proudly present the season-long race for the FedEx Cup. Today, it's live second-round coverage of the Pittsburgh Invitational. what they're able to do with that golf swing. Hit it so far at that size. Not overly big, but man, can really move it a long ways. Be a little disappointed with that because it lands in the rough and it appears to be fairly thick over there. Playing this par four, still not on the green after that second shot. But still not done. Um, a good third shot, maybe get away here with par. It is a windy day out here, Frank. My hat just blew off. This is going to affect the player's shots, that's for sure. So he didn't hit the green in regulation, but he still has a reasonably good chance to save his par about 10 feet away. Frank not giving any ground. No, you're starting to get the impression things are about to change, though. Third place. Moving on to the 11th hole here at Oakmont. Par 4, 379 yards. Frank, not the longest hitter, but sometimes you win tournaments by putting it in a good spot, and that's where we are right here, 280 yards out. Yeah, 280 down the middle of the fairway. That'll never get you in trouble. Oh, this looks like it's going to find the target. He's knocked it on the green, but not in a great position. This is a difficult chance coming up here. Long birdie try. Needs a pair of binoculars to see the hole. That is an excellent lag putt right there. Had the speed perfectly. Really not much to this. The only issue would be a lack of concentration or focus. Solid par. 
Well, Frank, the par 5 12th here at Oakmont, it's a lot of golf hole at 667 yards. It's the hardest par 5 I've ever seen or played that doesn't have water. Uh, it starts with that tee shot. The whole fairway slopes left to right just to get the ball on the fairway. Uh, you've got to draw the ball against the slope. The same problem exists with the second and the third shot. Always makes the hole easier, playing it from the fairway. Second shot. That was a big, bold strike, and now a chance for a big, bold move. Putt for Eagle coming up. Even par, currently. more hope than determination in that putt. It's a big putt right here for Birdie. That is some good work right there. Birdie, one shot closer to the lead. Well, Frank, what about this par 3 13th? Measures 183 yards. It has a little bit of a crescent-shaped green, uh, but it looks like the green should shape that way, but the actual contours of the green go in the opposite direction. The only good thing about that is chances are you've got an uphill putt. Uh-oh, this one's going left, Frank. Frank, better than we thought it was going to be. Yeah, that looked like it was headed for that thick stuff the whole way, but uh, a little fortunate. But then I guess you're allowed that in this game. Frank, this game will drive you crazy. Yeah, you can do all so many things right, and then just something so simple, completely wrong. Locked in on the read and the speed. Boy, that hurts right there, Frank. Yeah, he's got to knuckle down now, though, because, you know, we've seen it before, Rich. You know, two putts turn into three, four. So make sure you can limit the damage here. Well, with that drop shot, moves to one over for the tournament. Rich Lerner alongside Frank Nabilo. We're at the 14th hole at Oakmont Country Club. Frank, it's only 358 yards. How good is the scoring opportunity here? This is certainly one of the best chances on the, on the back nine here for Bertie. That's for sure, Rich. Just a long iron uh, off the tee there, threaded in between bunkers that adorn both sides of this fairway. Um, 
to set up to what you would say on Oakmont standards is a relatively gentle green. Well, it looks as though they're going to need to use all their strength to sort of hack it out of that rough, missing it off the tee here. So that sets up a tougher second shot, missing the fairway with the drive, now in the rough. Ball sitting down here in the rough, he's digging in. Down, little Sheba, down! Wow, lucky break right there, Frank. Wow. That's what everyone else is going to say, except him. Birdie here yesterday, trying to do it again today. And just moving that much closer to the leader now, Rich. Frank, right where you want to be at the midway point of a tournament. Yeah, you know your game's solid. Um, the focus is more on the leader and that you can just go out and play. You know, excellent position to be in. EA Sports and the PGA Tour proudly present the season-long race for the FedEx Cup. Today, it's live third-round coverage of the Pittsburgh Invitational. And hello again and welcome, Rich Lerner, alongside Frank Nabilo. We are at Oakmont Country Club in Western Pennsylvania. Frank, the site of so many historic moments. Great players have made their mark here. Sam Snead, Ben Hogan, Jack Nicklaus, Ernie Els, a long and distinguished list. Oakmont, if it's not the most difficult golf course in North America, Rich, it's certainly one of the most difficult golf courses. With its 210 bunkers, um, really personified by the church pews, the hard and slick greens that slope away from the player and the tight fairways, this golf course always requires the utmost precision. Great strike and a great result. Sitting up, a good chance to attack the flag. Playing his second shot here at the par five. Frank, this one's offline. It was rough and thick stuff over there. Pretty good result right there, considering... It looked rough all the way. Exactly. Rich really did. And getting ready for the putt. Now the fifth hole, short but challenging par for 382 yards, and it obviously rewards precision off the tee, heavily bunkered along the way. Good contact, good result. Frankie appears to be in control of his game in the early going. 
I like what I'm seeing out there, doing all the basic things at a very, very high level, getting the ball in play, that helps set up the next shot. Next shot gets on the green, that's how it sets up the birdie putt. It's one thing leading to another. Seems to like it, headed for the fat part of the green. Oh, can't hide the flag stick from that man. We have said it over and over. Another birdie. Par 3 sixth here at Oakmont. Frank, it's changed a bit since you played here in the U.S. Open back in 1994. Yes, it has, Rich. Uh, they used to have a bunker behind the screen, uh, sort of back left. They've removed that now and actually increased the back of this green. I'm not going to say it makes the hole that much easier. It just gives them uh, a few more places to cut a flag uh, when they choose to stick it in the back. So a chance for birdie after another solid approach shot. Frank going for another birdie here. Just to get on a real roll. Tough game, Frank. You can hit 300-yard drives and miss three-foot putts. Yeah, there's the ecstasy, and that's the agony. Trying to move on with a par in his pocket. Considering the lead that he has on the rest of the field, a par is all you need. All right, Frank, take us down onto the seventh hole, par four at 434 yards. Another one that's just another great driving hole. Bunkers on both sides of the fairway, so you can't really bail out either way. Used to be some trees in that down the right side. They've been removed, replaced now by fescue. So if you do miss those bunkers right or left, um, it's not exactly one of the easiest chip out to the fairway. Another one that's a, a must-hit fairway. The reason why, it's a long par four, and it's the only way you're going to hit this par four in two. Frank, really good chance from this position to make a birdie. Yeah, really the only thing he's looking at right now is the flag. Uh, this is a green light special. So the second of the par four goes begging, and now I'll have to rely on the no, can uh, redeem a lot of mistakes. See if he does it here. That was like Usain Bolt, Frank, right through the tape. Yeah, that first step, that was never going to stop. Remember, out of the rough. Expect the ball to jump forward a little bit. And he's made it onto the green now. This one just requires a little bit of focus. That's a bogey, but still in the lead. Yes. We, we start to see shots in hand really valuable. We're at the 8th at Oakmont, a famous hole, and Frank, it's not often we say of a par 3 that it is a beast, but the 8th at Oakmont is just that. Yeah, you can imagine a 300-yard par 3 to a flat green, that would be hard enough, but imagine to a 300-yard par 3 at a US Open to a green that goes up at the front and then crowns at the top and then slips away at both sides. That's the 8th hole. Another good swing, and it looks like, Frank, another really good shot. Not quite what he was hoping for, the tee shot in the bunker. So getting set for a greenside bunker shot, Frank, when I think of the great bunker players in the history of the sport, I think about Gary Player, Seve Ballesteros, who you knew so well, 
What did they do that made them so effective on these greenside bunker shots? They had an attitude for a start that was different. For them, it was, they saw possibilities. And uh, they, they would imagine the amount of sand. Remember, because this is the only shot in golf where you don't have to hit the ball first. So they would really choose the amount of sand behind the ball, whether that was an inch or two. Aim the club at that and made sure they followed through. Here we are at the ninth, par four, 477 yards. Frank, this is a rugged hole. It is. Um, it used to be a par five. Some say it should still be a par five. Uh, long straight hole, uh, runs alongside the first hole there. Bunkers left and right. And of course, if you find the rough, uh, the remnants of what it used to be a par five is that nice little cross bunker in the middle of the fairway, which forces you to lay up. That's an absolute tracer right there. In the fairway, and well over 320 yards. Side of 10 feet, really dialed in. See if he can go one better than yesterday when he made par. This putt for birdie. Has it now sitting at two under par for the tournament. Frank, that front page of the leaderboard has been looking good all week. You're exactly right, Rich. Uh, I think our winner is certainly going to come from that list right now. I'm excited for tomorrow's final round. EA Sports and the PGA Tour proudly present the season-long race for the FedEx Cup. Today, it's the final round of the Pittsburgh Invitational. It is one of the most difficult golf courses in the United States, Oakmont Country Club, outside Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Hello again and welcome, Rich Lerner, alongside Frank Navalo, who was a part of that dramatic U.S. Open in 1994 at Oakmont, ultimately won by Ernie Els. Frank, when you think of Oakmont, what comes to mind? The difficulty of the golf course, Rich. I know a lot's changed over the last 20 or so years. Uh, a lot of the trees are being removed, but really that wasn't the story of Oakmont. It's the slick greens, you know, how firm and fast they can be. The members there, for example, um, marvel at the fact that people think they're fast. They say, we put on these greens every single day and they're certainly no slower. But it's the bunkering as well. There's 210 bunkers here, they're all in play. And um, it just has that history. When you step on Oakmont, you just know you are walking on not one of the great courses in, in North America, but one of the great courses in golf. Drivable par four, not for most in this field, but for this guy, yes, he has just knocked it on. What a shot. You like that right there, Frank? Beautiful lag putt. Great pace. Made a par in his previous round. This time, it's for birdie.
A birdie will send him to one under on the leaderboard. All teed up at the 15th. It's a par four of 499 yards. What a test here, Frank. It certainly is. Uh, the tee shot here is a little bit like the par 5 12th, where the fairway slopes uh, quite severely from left to right. Um, it means the pews there on the left side are actually not a bad place to aim at. You just have to allow for that kick and roll towards the right. That is massive off the tee. Meters, yards, I don't care how you measure that. That's got to be what? 300 meters, 325 yards, something like that. Well, the drama starting to build here. 15th hole, the approach shot, Frank. This is the time to be buttoned up and dialed in. That's for sure. And this uh, second shot would be so much easier if they had just removed one little bunker. And that's that one short left, because that's where you would like to land that second shot. Because that bunker's there, you've just got to somehow avoid it by a yard or two, whether it's over it or to the right of it. Well, you can hear it right off the center of the club face. This has a chance to be close. Wow, Frank, he is dialed in. Yeah, that was just some shot on that. Easy birdie. Locked in on the read and the speed. <laughs> Makes the putt for a birdie. Yet another demanding hole here at Oakmont. A par 3 16th, 231 yard par 3. Frank calls for a well struck long iron. It, it certainly does. It's going to favor something that's hit a little higher and a little softer. If you could just mentally cut this green in half and just sort of look at the left half of this green, that's really the best way to play this hole. And the reason why is the general contours all move to the right. That ball can still funnel down to the right side of the green. That is classy. What a chance of going in. So a tester from four feet. It's amazing. Doesn't matter how close it goes, it's an extra shot. That one will definitely hurt. Clean this up with a tap. Has it. Good putt right there. Frank, here we are at the 17th. It's only 313 yards. That's par four, by the way. And nowadays, that could be a par three. What's the right way to play this hole, or does it simply depend on where you are in the championship? Uh, I think it depends on where you are in the championship. Sometimes people try and hit drivers at drivable par fours. Believe it or not, not necessary to make birdie, but it's the easiest option to make four. One of the problems here at 17, if you do lay it up and the flag is on the right side, you turn it into a very, very difficult short par four. And that's the reason why people often try and drive these greens. How good was that, Frank, from the rough? Oh, that's amazing. That's a master class in short game. Par yesterday. Now for birdie. Good read, good line, well played. This is where so many of the legends, from Hogan to Nicholas to Miller to Ells, made their imprint. And don't forget about Angel Cabrera, the last time the U.S. Open was played here. The 18th hole, the clubhouse straight ahead. What a view, and what a moment in the championship. Beautiful looking shot right here. That was just a beautiful drive and hit it solid and right in the middle. Well, Frank, it comes down to this. One more good swing, one more difficult shot. And one more correct decision as well here, Rich. Different levels on these greens. This ball is going to have to land on the correct level to get the right result. There's a big green, and they're going to use every inch of it. 
Good chance now for a birdie. That was an outstanding play. Oh, it's almost a guarantee there after that shot. Just needs to keep it steady here over the putt. Oh, man. I just pushed it. Boy, that hurts. Par attempt here. He'll take par and move on. Just a tremendous week of golf, and that, my friend, is a winner right there. Yeah, and he should be proud of himself, too. It took golf of the highest quality to beat this high-quality field, and uh, that is something that you will remember for a long, long time. Thank you.